Hi there, uh, I'm Jeremy Munn. I'm a lecturer in the School of Architecture in Camden. I teach two classes, uh, on, primarily focused on business at the master's level in the School of Architecture. And uh, I was tapped to teach those classes uh, because I am formally trained as an architect and licensed, as well as I, am an, I have an MBA from uh, Demore McKim School of Business at Northeast. I think what I try to bring to the program is the students have spent their whole undergrad focused on design, design theory, uh, technical design, kind of how to put a building together. And they just assume they're gonna get work when they graduate, uh, even at the master's level. Um, like, okay, I have all the skills now, uh, let me put my skills to work and, and build a building, design a building. What I've come to realize in my professional practice is that you have to win the work to do the work. So there's that aspect. And then there's the fact that the students, because we have a co-op program, they get experience in the traditional practice model um, early on in their, in their career. And so because I teach a practice course, I don't have to teach the, as much of the traditional practice because they're experiencing it for real. So I, I kind of, widened the view and I'll, and spend a little bit more time diving into areas they typically don't get exposure to, which is how you win work, how you do business development, how you market. You know, we don't advertise in our industry, but how you would advertise. Uh, and uh, zooming back out actually is how you think about business strategy. So how do you position a firm in the marketplace so that you, you have the best skill sets to execute on? And so I spend a semester with the students focused on market position and brand alignment between a client's brand and your firm's brand and your tech technological skills or your skill sets so that you can best be positioned to win a project because it's a very competitive market. Unfortunately, architecture has grown up to a certain extent. There's a lack of differentiation in the marketplace. Unless you are what we call a star architect, right? A star architect, Frank Gehry or Renzo Piano or, or big Jark Ingalls. Um, you, your differentiation through design is minimal. It's more about your network of who you know and, and how you win work and building relationships and trust and, and specific expertise within a subset like laboratories or healthcare or I don't know, um, low income housing right, as examples of subject matter expertise. So um, we spend a lot of time kind of focused on that so that the students can really come out with a degree and understand how a firm should has to win work and the amount of energy it takes to actually pursue a client, write a proposal and interview and prepare to interview. Um, so uh, when my students go out and talk to um, employers when they're trying to get a job, Mo the feedback I get is, wow, we didn't realize that you guys are learning that in school. That is amazing. We can pop you right into our marketing efforts. Um, we might put you on an interview um, because you have practice doing it because you'd spent a semester focused on kind of a lot of those aspects. From a uh, homework perspective and grading, it's all digital. So a lot of the content uh, seamlessly transitioned. The challenges were how do I keep students attention for lectures um, and I do a lot of group work where I'm a critic to their group presentations and then I also have guest lectures come in um, maybe half a dozen a semester um, and then there's the final crits right the final critiques where the students this semester are pitching um, alternative business models for how they could parlay their design degrees into something other than traditional architecture? Or how do I get critics to come in and, and, and act as uh, Shark Tank critics and investors? And so there's been some challenges. Um, you know, it's hard to gauge the classroom and uh, how, you know, quote unquote awake they are or focused on my lecture because I, it's hard to gauge feedback. Um, so that's a negative of the, the lecture style. Um, the, the pro side though has been that 
Um, I've been able to bring guest critics into to lecture on alternative uh, business models so far this semester seamlessly, or almost seamlessly. I, I had a couple of tech, technological hiccups, but I've had three different um, companies come in and present over the last couple of weeks. They happen to all be Boston-based because they were scheduled before COVID-19 issues. So I was able to bring local people and they, they showed up from their, you know, basement offices like, you know, where I am right now. And we had a, we had a great lecture and I got, you know, I had good um, student uh, lecturer feedback question and answer kind of uh, content. And I, I had follow up from students. Thank you for bringing that person on. And um, I'd love to connect with that person about, you know, opportunity or a question I had. And so I think it's worked out fairly well. And it's, it's, it's opened up my mind to, hey, next year I could just invite a critic or a lecturer from California or South America or Europe. And as long as I get the time frame correct, they could be anywhere, right? And so it broadens uh, my opportunity because there are companies that aren't Boston based that are would be great examples of alternative business models where architects are providing a lot of value in a different market. Um, but they're not in Boston. So now I can bring them in and I feel a lot more confident of being able to do that. I am inviting a nonprofit research fellow from West Virginia to be a final critic this year because I can. Um, he's in West Virginia and we're up in Boston, but it doesn't matter um, because we're all going to be uh, coming from our virtual homes. There's opportunity for me in the future to figure out how to do that um, in a mixed classroom where mixed as in some some physical presence of critics or, or guests, guest lecturers and some in, in the same session, um, some virtual. And so I think there are some good lessons for for me and for them and for you know how we practice professionally from you know how we operate